Hello. Today we are going to be looking more into the details of the Minecraft world. Like my other Minecraft physics videos, we will be taking the facts as presented by the Minecraft world at face value, and using those facts to develop theories about what the Minecraft world actually is, and how it works. Our trusty assistant, Bob, will once again be helping us with our demonstrations. So Bob, why don't you start by opening one of these doors to show the good people what we will be talking about today. That's right, the first thing we will be talking about is redstone, which I will attempt to prove is in fact one of the most unique and useful materials in the universe. Okay, Bob, why don't you go ahead and open the second door? That's right, the other thing we will be talking about is the monsters of the Minecraft world. They sure don't like you, do they, Bob? Oh, that looks painful. Don't worry, I'm sure that organ isn't important. Alright, let's start with redstone. The first thing we notice about redstone is its ability to act as a power source. The light given off by this lamp is obvious. What's more important, though, is the heat, because we can measure it. To demonstrate, we will place the device in a large chamber of ice. And if we power this, we discover that the ice around the device begins to melt immediately. It takes seven and a quarter million calories to melt each cubic meter of ice. We can measure the rate at which the ice melts, and we can use that to determine power capacity, which by my calculations equals 6.1 megawatts within the first minute of operation. That tremendous power comes from only one cubic meter of redstone. Now, since our content advisors have informed us that this experiment did not have anywhere near enough explosions to meet our standards, we will now replace the ice with TNT for no reason whatsoever. There! Now wasn't that cathartic? So, anyway, as you work with redstone, you quickly discover that it really doesn't fit the form of a traditional power source. If you cover a set of redstone lamps with a relatively thin layer of redstone tracings and connect it to a switch, every one of the devices will be powered. Even though there is no obvious power source unit or block present. How does it do this? Well, there are some clues in our observations of the Minecraft world. If you find redstone in its natural form and you strike it or otherwise disturb it, it glows for a while with both light and heat. From this, we can observe that redstone in its raw form is capable of converting the chaotic energy of vibrations from a hammer strike or a footstep into useful energy in the form of light and heat. I postulate that it does this by acting as a kind of Maxwell's demon. You may ask what I mean. Well, Maxwell was a physicist who suggested a thought experiment where a magical demon allows high-energy particles to pass from one chamber to another, but blocks low-energy particles from doing the same. Once the high-energy particles are separated, useful power can be extracted from them. The effect is drawing power from chaos and reducing that chaos. Every corner of the universe is filled with vast amounts of chaotic energy, but it's usually not possible to tap into it because of that chaotic nature. I suggest that, by acting as Maxwell's demon, redstone makes it possible to tap into that nearly limitless power. Which is why redstone sometimes appears to be a power source, but other times seems to be a conductor or wire, because it is acting as a conduit for the power that was already present, inherent in the fabric of the universe. So. This mysterious substance grants nearly limitless energy, and this invaluable material is present on the Minecraft world in such abundance that many of its inhabitants will actually throw it away, preferring ordinary hunks of crystalline carbon that they call diamonds. Why is the redstone there? What is its purpose? 
Well, the first clue lies in its location. Redstone ore is found towards the bottom of the Minecraft world, near the lava lakes and the bedrock. In my first Minecraft physics video, I presented evidence that the Minecraft world was actually an artificial construction, likely in the shape of a giant loop. It's possible that the redstone is actually part of the machinery of that loop. It might be responsible for regulating temperature in connection with the lava lakes. It may also power the giant force fields I showed in the previous video that help keep the atmosphere of the loop contained. Think about that for a moment the next time you casually rip it out of place and throw it away. It's possible that every redstone block mined by the ignorant inhabitants of the Minecraft world draw it a little closer to an inevitable oblivion. All right, let's move on to the less pleasant inhabitants of the Minecraft world. I've previously discussed Endermen, but what about the other creatures? It is difficult to find direct evidence of the purpose of the so-called monsters but I believe we can make a few educated guesses. Given that the Minecraft world is a highly sophisticated artificial construction, a machine that seems intended to provide a very large habitat, I believe it is reasonable to call the monsters the product of advanced bioengineering, artificially created by the Minecraft architects. Quite probably with a military purpose in mind, given their apparent destructive tendencies. The leading theory among biologists today is that life is created naturally by the combination of certain chemicals under specific conditions. I will draw an analogy with crystals. Just as a crystal with breathtaking complexity can form from simple natural processes under the right circumstances, this theory, called abiogenesis, goes that life may also form as a natural result of the right conditions being present. Why this would be the case is up for debate, but let's set aside the bigger philosophical questions and just go with it. If we assume abiogenesis is correct, perhaps a sufficiently advanced technology could manipulate the conditions where life is created to create more advanced forms of life on a more predictable basis. This explains how creatures can appear with no apparent source. Zombies do not have parents. They simply appear as a natural result of carefully manipulated conditions of the Minecraft world. Zombies seem to be basic foot soldiers. They are not armed when created, but they do wield weapons if they are made available. That reinforces the notion of their military purpose. And the other monster types fulfill various military functions as well. The Minecraft world is a huge army creation facility with a mind-boggling production capacity. So, now we come to the people of the Minecraft world. The players and the villagers. If the purpose of the Minecraft world is to create all these ruthlessly efficient killing machines, why are there people with little apparent combat effectiveness present? Well, no system is perfect, particularly one that has not been maintained by its creators for millennia. Look at the way the player appears, and the circumstances they first find themselves in. They appear in the wilderness, seemingly randomly. There are no parents around, no community, no equipment of any kind. It's obvious if you think about it. Zombies aren't people with some kind of mutation or infection. Rather, people are zombies that are simply defective. A defect called free will. A very counterproductive attribute for military purposes. And the apparent animosity of the so-called monsters is merely a case of quality control. They are aware of the defective nature of the people, and they seek to rectify it. In the case of villagers, they can succeed. I would guess that the villagers represent a limited form of the defect. That is why there are some zombies that actually look like villagers. But the defect is not major in those zombies, and they still function normally. 
In the case of the players, however, it seems the defect is more complete, and they cannot be repaired by the zombies, leaving only one alternative, which I will delicately call decommissioning. So, I hope you have found this entertaining and have perhaps had an opportunity to speculate yourselves on what all these crazy notions and ideas might mean. I look forward to reading your comments about them. As always, if you have enjoyed this, then I would encourage you to like the video and subscribe. Thank you, and I will see you next time.